Welcome to this very important vignette on two-level fractional factorial designs. These are the designs that you will use in most of your experimental work, and when it comes time to expand into investigating multiple level situations, these will form the core of those designs. Often this expansion is merely an augmentation of the original experimental investigation. Again, efficiency is at play getting the required information at the least expenditure of resources. We have just learned how efficient two-level balanced factorial designs are, but do we really have efficiency? The two to the k give us the required information, single effects, and the interactions, and they have built-in replication to boot. But as the number of factors increases, the number of runs increase, and even worse, we get too much information. An embarrassingly large amount of information. Did you ever think you could get too much information? Let's look at the number of runs created by a reasonable number of factors, say from 5 to 10. With 5 factors, there are 32 treatment combinations. 64 treatment combinations with 6, 128 treatment combinations with 7, and over a thousand TCs with 10 factors. Let's look at the information contained in all these runs, but before we do that, we need to discuss a fundamental idea concerning the unit of measures of information. In statistical experimental designs, we measure information in the units called degrees of freedom. While degrees of freedom, or DF, are fundamental to the broader subject of statistical analysis, we can look at them from an engineering point of view. In designing a part, an engineer will often find that there are many constraints on, say, dimensions. Let's say that there are three components for this part which must fit into a cavity. However, after freely choosing two of these components, the constraint of the size of the cavity dictates the final component size. The engineer has lost a free choice in the design. The engineer has only two degrees of freedom in this design, only two independent choices. The last was dependent. It's the same in experimental design. If we have two levels for a factor, and we compute the mean value of these levels, as we do in the analysis, we can have only one free choice for the effect or influence of this factor. So, if we had three levels for a factor, we would have two degrees of freedom, just like the engineer has in the three-component design. We'll learn more about degrees of freedom in the vignette on statistical analysis. For now, just remember, the number of levels minus one gives the degrees of freedom. Oh, one more thing. The interactions also have degrees of freedom. Interactions are information. These degrees of freedom are determined by multiplying the degrees of freedom of the terms in the interaction. Since in a two-level design each factor has one degree of freedom, the interactions also have one degree of freedom. One times one is one. So, back to the information content of this array of two-level design structures. With five factors, there are 32 TCs. There are five degrees of freedom for single effects, 10 for the two-factor interactions, 10 for the three-factor interactions, 5 for the four-factor interactions, and 1 for the five-factor interaction. We determine the number of interactions with the combinations formula. For 10 factors, there are 1,024 treatment combinations. There are 10 degrees of freedom for single effects, 45 degrees of freedom for the two-factor interactions, and 968 degrees of freedom for all the rest. Now, while interactions are important, when they arise in our systems, they are not prolific. Here is an example of when I thought I had a complex interaction. I was working at Xerox that had just acquired electro-optical systems, EOS. One of the technologies at EOS was large-scale electroforming. This is much like electroplating, but the process runs longer to deposit a thick layer. This system was perfect for making a belt to Xerox specifications. Here's a look at the process. In a large tank filled with green liquid, a mold that has the outside diameter of the belt is connected to an electrode. In the center of the mold, the opposite charge electrode is connected to an ingot of nickel. When the current is turned on, 
the ions of nickel migrate to the mold and form the foil, which is then removed as the belt. An experiment was designed by another person to investigate the effect of the five factors on thickness. I inherited the analysis of this experiment that had a total of 144 runs. I guess they had not heard of fractional factorial designs. What I found was very interesting, a four-factor interaction. When I met with the EOS people to explain the results, I asked them about the conduct of the experiment. They were quite upright and straightforward. We looked at all those 144 runs and knew that many of them would not make good belts. So we doctored up those bad runs by making changes to other factors that were not included in the experiment. I concluded that the experiment was worthless. We can learn two things from this story. First, there was no four-factor interaction. And second, experiments should not be expected to make good product. Experiments must make some good and some bad. That way, we can find the functions that make good and bad. In over 40 years of experimentation, I have only seen one three-factor interaction. Two-factor interactions are common, but beyond that, Mother Nature is good to us. So this means that we can draw a line between required information and excess information. We need single effects and two-factor interactions. We usually don't need three-factor interactions and above. This discussion of what is required information leads us to the 2 to the k minus p fractional factorial designs, where we still have two levels and k factors, but we introduce a new element, p, which I call the fractionalization element. p is a counter and part of the mechanism for constructing fractional factorial designs. The basis of these designs is to systematically confound excess information with required information.